So now that we have our optimal GMM estimator, that's going to be the thing that if we're using GMM, we pretty much always just want to try to find the optimal GMM estimator because it's always great to have, have the most efficient estimator we can. Once we have that thing, we might want to do some specification tests to check that our model is correctly specified or do some hypothesis tests about those parameters. We might want to know, are those parameters different from zero? Are they different from each other? Maybe there's some function of parameters that we care about so we can test those things. So the specification test that we're going to use here is called the over-identifying restrictions test. And the idea is that when we have more moment conditions than parameters, our model is what we call over-identified. Remember, we can't ensure that all moments equal zero simultaneously. And what we've tried to do is get them all as close as possible to zero simultaneously. So one thing we might want to do is to test if we're actually getting those moments close enough to zero. And when I say close enough, I mean kind of like statistically close enough to zero to really say that, that, that our, our moment conditions all hold. So what we're testing is just that our moment condition, our population moment conditions are in fact true that our population moment conditions, when evaluated at the true parameter values, that those equal zero. And the intuition here is that uh, if some of our moment conditions are not close to zero, then there's the sample moment, there if, if, then the sample moments won't be close to zero. And remember the sample moments are going into our objective function. And so the objective function of optimal GMM, if it's not close to zero, that's happening because some of our sample moments aren't close to zero. And so if our objective function is relatively large, we have moments that are not close to zero. And so then we might conclude that in fact, our, our, our moment conditions don't hold. And so when we estimate theta hat using optimal GMM, we can construct this test statistic. We'll call it the over-identifying restrictions test statistic. So we'll abbreviate it OIR. That's gonna equal this expression right here, which it turns out is just our optimal, or our, our, our GMM objective function evaluated at the optimal GMM estimator. So like I said, this is just the, the objective function at our optimal GMM estimator. If that thing's too big, we wanna conclude that we actually haven't gotten our moment conditions close enough to zero. Turns out this test statistic is asymptotically chi-squared with L minus K degrees of freedom. And so we can calculate what this objective function is. We can calculate what the chi-squared critical value is for our degrees of freedom, however many extra moments we have basically, and then test whether that objective function or the test statistic is relatively too large. And if it is, then we're going to reject this null hypothesis, conclude that some of our moments don't equal zero, so some of our population moment conditions don't hold, and if our population moment conditions don't hold, then we're essentially saying that our model is misspecified for the data that we have. We haven't actually been able to achieve the conditions that we wanted to achieve. So our model is misspecified and we can't be confident that our parameters, our estimated parameters, are consistent estimates of the true parameters that we want. So it's always good to check this and it's not good to reject this test. That means our model is incorrectly specified and we don't want to interpret our parameters. We also might wanna do some hypothesis tests with our parameters. When we talked about maximum likelihood two weeks ago, we talked about three different hypothesis tests. We talked in kind of in detail about the likelihood ratio test. Then I mentioned that we also have the Wald test and the Lagrange multiplier test. There's an analogous test procedure for each one of these using GMM estimators. The intuition is exactly the same. Every one of these for maximum likelihood depended on the log likelihood function, evaluating the log likelihood function. 
In GMM, they're going to depend on evaluating the GMM objective function, but otherwise the intuition uh, is exactly the same. I'm not going to talk about the details of them. We're not going to use them in this class, but uh, uh, you might need them in your own research or you might run into them in, in the literature when, you're look, when you find papers that use GMM. So if you want to see the details on these, I'll, I'll just refer you to either an econometrics textbook or uh, the supplemental notes that I posted to see the details of what's going on with these tests. But we're not going to talk about them any more than just mentioning them here in this class. So with everything about GMM estimation covered now, in the next, and this will be the last video for this week, we're going to talk about how to use GMM to actually estimate a logit model.